question that you're not sure what the answer is, um, which sometimes you may find a staff member that is very knowledgeable about some of the issues that you may be talking about. Don't feel intimidated, certainly don't make it. Uh, at this point, I'd like to ask for uh, John McManus, who is a, a lobbyist for AOTA and uh, an assistant for Congress of California. And I always found the most important thing was parents from my home district say what the real issues um, that they're confronting back in the district. And, and what that means to your ability to provide health care for uh, the congressman's constituents or, or the center's constituents. So I think to the degree that you can link things back as you're talking to them about how you're trying to provide health care, how some of the uh, laws in the Congress that's passed have made it very, very difficult to do, um, is very important. And you should assume basic ignorance from probably 90% of the people you meet with. They probably don't even know what occupational therapy is. Or uh, it's not, it's not uh, unheard of for, for a staff member covering six or seven different issues. Healthcare being is one of them that be able to work on social security, tax, trade, um, the environment, all kinds of different issues up here. And uh, so a large part of your role would be educating them about your practices, um, your patients that you're working with, and uh, what the implications are of the uh, legislation that's, that's now on the books and that's been contemplated by Congress. Uh, the good news is uh, your, uh, your association here is doing a fabulous job of, of getting uh, legislation to correct a significant problem. About 10 years ago, Congress passed the Balanced Budget Act, and that included a number of reforms to Medicare, including uh, therapy. One of the biggest reforms they did was they put therapy out of a cost plus system and onto a uh, physician fee schedule. Um, and secondly, uh, just because they thought the therapy utilization was growing so rapidly, they put an arbitrary cap on the amount of care that, that, that could be, be provided. One thing I want to emphasize, and it's important you guys emphasize when you're meeting with the staff and, and members of Congress today, is that the, the therapy cap is the only provision in Medicare that literally stops patients from getting the care they need. There's a lot of arbitrary price controls and things of that nature in, in Medicare. Uh, the fee schedule is an example of that. We're looking also at a 10% payment cut for that next year. But there's no other example in Medicare where patients literally stop getting health care because of an arbitrary payment cap. Uh, and therefore, it's one of the most egregious examples of how government tries to control health care. So I think we have a very persuasive case to say, we've got to reform this. It was a policy put in place 10 years ago that didn't make any sense. And Congress, to their credit, I guess five separate times has either de delayed the therapy cap implementation and most recently created an exception process in which um, if, if, if you present a patient with a clinical diagnosis or if they're in a the nursing home, they can get more care. And what, what the request is now is to get that exception process um, extended for another couple of years. In the House, we have uh, the Becerra Bill that has 160 co-sponsors. That is a significant number of, of uh, people thinking this is a, a, a very serious issue and has to be addressed. In the Senate, you have the Anson Bill that has 30 co-sponsors. So one of the requests, obviously, should be please co-sponsor the bill if you're not already co-sponsored. Um, to the degree you can build up and get over 218 in the House and over 50 in the Senate, that doesn't ensure passage, but it makes it a lot easier when, 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 the, when the committee's jurisdiction and the leadership are trying to see we've got a limited uh, amount of resources. What are problem are we going to address? And if Mr. Becerra or Mr. Hanson can say, I've got a majority of the House co functioning my legislation, well, that makes it a lot easier. And so there's, there's a real grassroots effort trying, trying to address that issue. The second big issue confronting therapists is, is the significant problems of what's called the sustainable growth rate payment formula. Uh, that, that's uh, the method in which physicians and therapists and other practitioners who are on the physician fee schedule get paid. That has been very similar to the therapy cap issue in which there has been an acute problem the last five or six years and every year Congress has to come back and address it. If Congress is not aggressive, you guys are all looking at a 10% payment cut next year, and every year thereafter, a 5% payment cut, total about 
basically because the formula looks at what's allowed spending and, and what's actual spending. When actual spending exceeds an allowed spending target, but obviously an arbitrary amount, uh, payments get cut unless Congress comes in and changes that formula. The good news also is that House has passed the bill mentioned earlier, their extra Medicare package, which addresses both these issues. Is it two year free on the payment cuts? So that you, instead of getting a 10% payment cut in the first year, you get a 0.5% payment increase, and then a 0.5% increase um, in 2009 as well. And secondly, there's, there's a two year extension to the exception process. The Senate has not yet acted on Medicare legislation. And it looks like right now we're focused only on children's health care. That's okay so long as they come back and address our problems later. So what we're hopeful for is the House and Senate to come together later in the year, probably October or November, perhaps December, as things can often happen when, uh, around here at the last second. The veto really is important, and no one that you're meeting today is expected to be um, an expert on the legislative mechanics here. What they are going to find useful is your hands-on experience in working with patients and the implications of the arbitrary payment policies and how they affect your ability to care for the patients that these people are representing. So I really encourage you, for, uh, thank you for being here, it's very, very important. And I think you can make a big difference uh, by making the case on, on how, how these arbitrary payment limits really impair your ability to take care of patients that are voting for these congressmen, and that's what they, they, they uh, think about most. So if you can tie things back, look at the congressman's district, the center's district, what hospital you're working out of, whether there's a certain university you're affiliated with. And if you read this, it makes a bigger problem than just a few therapists. That's also very important as well. Thanks, Joe. Right now, it's my pleasure to introduce the senator from the beautiful state of Hawaii, Senator Akaka, who's our uh, privileged guest coming here today to address this group. Um, senator Akaka has been a longtime friend of occupational therapy. He is a co sponsor of our therapy cap repeal legislation. He does a lot of work in the Senate. You have 100 people doing the work of 435 congressmen. Uh, so he's on several different committees, and uh, most important to occupational therapy, he's on the Armed Services Committee, he's on the Indian Affairs Committee, and he's also the chairman of the Better, Veterans Affairs Committee. And he has recently introduced some legislation that's moving through the Senate that would address traumatic brain injury. It improves research and treatment. And it also recognizes the role of occupational therapy. So with that, I'd like to thank the Senator and introduce him to come up and speak for us. We also have a, uh, a letter of support for his piece of legislation that we'll give him here today. So please join me in, in welcoming him. Thank you. Try to 